In this video, we're going to be looking at the acid catalyzed hydrolysis of an ester. So an ester is a carboxylic acid derivative, and all carboxylic acid derivatives can be hydrolyzed to give carboxylic acid. So we are converting this to a carboxylic acid. So what this is, is essentially the opposite of the Fischer esterification. So we have, if we have an ester, let's just draw a generic ester, and we treat this with aqueous acid, and we heat it up, we can convert this to a carboxylic acid. So what we're doing is you're gonna be leaving this, losing this OR group as an alcohol, and you're replacing it with water that's coming from this aqueous acid solution. So the alcohol that you're gonna generate as a byproduct depends on what the ester was that you started with. So it's gonna be whatever R group was attached to that oxygen is gonna be part of the alcohol that you make as a byproduct. And so this is not really, this alkoxide is no better of a leaving group than this hydroxide would be, or an aqueous solution, a more accurate way to say would be the neutral alcohol or the neutral water, because it's gonna be protonated, neither one of this is a better leaving group than the other. So this is an equilibrium reaction. So the way that we drive these equilibrium towards the, the product is by using an excess of whatever your nucleophile is. So if you think of using H3O+, plus, that means your solvent is water and it's present in excess. So having excess of a reagent is one way to push an equilibrium forward. So let's look at an example. So let's just draw an ester. So let me draw, so what do we have here? So let's say this is isopropyl butanoate. Butanoate. Okay, and so when you ever you do a hydrolysis of an, of an ester, the, the carbonyl, that's where you're gonna end up adding water. So the water that gets added comes from the solvent and you're gonna lose your OR group as an alcohol. So when you do this reaction, you would get the butanoic acid And then as a byproduct, because it was isopropyl butanoate, you're gonna get isopropanol. So whatever is attached to the oxygen of your ester, that's what's gonna be attached to the alcohol in your product. So let's take a look at the mechanism. So this, what we have is we have H3O plus in the solvent of water. Um, so I'm going to bring this up before we talk about the mechanism because we need to know what we actually have in solution. So we have a catalytic amount really of acid, so a small amount of H3O+. plus. So that will be an acid. So if we ever need to add a proton to anything, we're going to use the H3O+. Plus. And then we also have water in there. And so water can act as a nucleophile or as a base. And that's what we'll see it doing in this reaction. So the very first step of any acid catalyzed reaction of a carbonyl is that you are going to protonate the carbonyl oxygen. So that's why we needed to be aware of what our acid species is, because this is what we're going to use to put a proton on that carbonyl oxygen. So I'm going to draw the H3O+. Plus. So this is always going to be the first step of any acid catalyzed reaction of a carbonyl. And so we are protonating that carbonyl oxygen. And so what that does, and so all of these steps are equilibrium. So what that does is it makes this into a more electrophilic carbonyl. So it makes it more reactive. And this is necessary because our nucleophile is a neutral water molecule and that's not a particularly strong nucleophile. In fact, it's a weak nucleophile. So, but it can attack as long as this carbonyl has been protonated already. So now that we have that protonated, the water can act as a nucleophile and it's gonna attack that carbonyl and push those electrons up onto the oxygen. And so now after this, we are gonna have four single bonds to this carbon. So this intermediate will be a tetrahedral intermediate. So we've got that OH. We still have our isopropoxy group and we have added a water molecule. 
So we formed a new bond between the oxygen and the carbon, and that oxygen still has two hydrogens. So we will draw those in. And we put an extra electron pair on here. We can't have that many electrons on the oxygen, but we do have a positive charge. So I'm just gonna turn them into a positive charge because that is a positively charged oxygen. Okay, so we've got that. And so what we need to do now is some proton transfers because right now this looks like it's poised to kick back off a water molecule, which it certainly can. This whole thing is an equilibrium, um, but we're gonna focus in this, on the steps that are bringing us towards the product. So we need to remove a proton from here and then in the next step, we need to add a proton where we want to make our good leaving group. So we're going to use water. That is what we have available as a base or a nucleophile. So we're going to use that to take the acidic hydrogen. And so now we are going to have an intermediate that is neutral. because we have removed that extra proton. And now we're gonna put a proton on this oxygen. So you might be wondering about the order of these steps. Um, so we wanna make sure we take this proton off before we add one here, because it's only a catalytic amount of acid. To have this molecule doubly protonated, we take a really acidic solution, and that's just not what we're dealing with. So you have to take one proton off before we add the next one on. And you might also say, well, can't we just draw it all in one step? Well, sure, it would look fine on paper, but you would be implying that all of these things are actually taking place simultaneously, and that's just not gonna happen. Um, that would involve too many things just happening to line up in just the right orientation. So unfortunately, we have to do these transfer steps separately. All right, so that being said, now we're trying to make this isopropoxy group into a good leaving group so it can leave as the neutral alcohol. So the acid that we have available is H3O plus. So we are going to take a hydrogen from there, right? And so we've we used our acid here, but then we regenerated here, we're using it again here, and we will see that we regenerated again later on. So it truly is a catalyst. All right, so we are protonating this to make a good leaving group. So now it's got a proton, and we still have this OH. Okay, so we are actually now getting really close to the product because we've got our isopropanol that can leave um, and how it's going to leave is it's going to be assisted by the lone pressure electrons in the oxygen. And so we're going to push these down and that's going to form the double bond, making this look a lot more like the carboxylic acid product and kicking off the leaving group. And so what we're going to have is we will have the protonated carboxylic acid, right? Because you still have a hydrogen on there. Um, and you formed the isopropanol. So you've got half of it. And so then in the final step, um, we're just going to take our another molecule of water to act as a base. Um, so we'll remove this proton and also regenerate that acid catalyst again. So that overall, we will not have consumed acid because every time we used it, we then regenerated it. So it truly is a catalyst in this solution. So there's that final step. So this is going to make H3O plus, and we'll put these electrons onto the oxygen, making that into the neutral carboxylic acid.